Hello, my name is Dr. Asad Lukmani. I'm a consultant haematologist at Imperial College Healthcare NHS Trust, and I have a special interest in looking after patients with sickle cell disease and other red cell disorders. So sickle cell disease is a term which uh, includes um, a group of disorders um, which result in abnormal red blood cells. It's a genetic disorder. It's due to a single gene disorder. And um, we'll talk um, a little bit about the, the various aspects of uh, complications that arise in patients with sickle cell disease, the symptoms that they experience, um, and also um, the mechanisms by which the condition causes the, the abnormalities that we see. There are many millions of people worldwide uh, living with this disorder and even more people who carry the disorder in the silent form. We are now moving away from using opioids in the management of chronic pain. The alternatives would be a multidisciplinary approach including physiotherapy, psychology and then the input of the chronic pain management team. My name is Jeremy Anderson. I'm the sickle cell psychologist working at Imperial College Healthcare NHS Trust. People with sickle cell disease have to manage a lot of different tasks. It's a lifelong illness and that means they have to manage their symptoms, they have to take steps to prevent their symptoms, but they also have all of the social and occupational uh, implications of having a lifelong illness. And most of all, I mean, when people have a lifelong illness, um, and they keep coming back to hospital again and again, they see the same people over and over again, and they develop a long-term relationship with the people uh, who are caring for them. There's a burden on both patients and staff uh, to try to have the best relationship possible. And there's a number of ways where the relationship can go wrong. One of the things that's different about the experience of people with sickle cell disease is that you know, if they've come into hospital a lot, they're very familiar with the way hospitals run, how things are supposed to work. And so if something doesn't work out the way it's supposed to, um, they notice. The pain in sickle cell is something that's especially complicated. It's a combination of both acute pain, that is the um, disease process that's causing uh, new instances of pain, as well as uh, chronic pain from complications that develop over time and that can flare up. And so people with sickle cell have multiple sources of pain that they have to manage. Yeah, so a lot of people think that a clinical psychologist is, is someone you see when you have a mental health problem. But really, psychologists are just interested in helping people um, make changes in their life. Anyone who has a long-term illness um, has an extra burden uh, when trying to apply for a job. Uh, many people with sickle cell um, struggle with the issue of whether to reveal their, their illness to a potential employer for fear that they won't get the job. So a lot of the patients that I work with have talked about an additional burden that comes from the level of stigma uh, associated with sickle cell disease and that can vary by the particular culture they come from. One of the things that I talk with many, about with many of my patients is that you know, sickle cell used to be considered a disease of childhood. In the late 1970s, the median lifespan for someone with sickle cell disease was 14 years, and that's increased tremendously with the advent of new treatments. But what that means is there's an entire generation of people with sickle cell who've gone their entire lives being told, often by health professionals uh, or by their families, that they're not going to live very long. So I think in the same way that, that there's you know, little payoff when you're treating a long-term or lifelong condition uh, with, with no cure, uh, there's no payoff for the healthcare professional. Um, there's also a, a, an impact on the patients. If, if doctors or nurses show even a hint of, of frustration or resignation when treating a patient, patients notice that and they, and they can very easily feel like they're being treated differently than other sorts of patients. So, all hematology specialist centers um, are required to have a, a clinical psychologist um, uh, in order to meet the criteria for a specialist center. Um, so if you are someone with sickle cell and you're treated at a, at a specialist center, um, you should be able to self-refer to the psychologist.